welcome back to my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe so I can continue doing these videos. Thank you. You can find me on all social media by Paranormal Geek. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome Richard Leo, uh, the gentleman psychic. I'm so excited to have you in my channel. I am glad to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Richard Leo is a psychic and that has made appearances on Ghost Adventures, Jubilee's YouTube channel, and I think on the first season of It Feels Evil from Travel Channel, if I'm correct. Yes, that. And I've also done other things too. I mean, I was... I was the MC for America's Next Top Model, and I was oh, on. Wow. I mean, I've done, I've done, I've done some things. That's so cool! I didn't know that. I was researching on you, but I didn't see, I didn't see that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I well, I lived in LA, and I was pursuing. I mean, I live in LA. I live in Pasadena, <laughs> but I, I lived in Hollywood, and I was pursuing more that aspect of it, the performance side of it, and. Um, so I was on a, a Modern Family, Arrested Development, the Bean Apartment 23. I did, um, I was, I, I had a, a, a pretty featured role in, in Tangerine, the film Tangerine. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've done, I've done a few things. Wow, that's really cool. I can see you doing acting again, like getting into that one day. If <laughs> I'm right, you. if I'm picking up. The well, you know what, when I, when I moved to LA, I, I was in pursuit of acting. And the thing is, even when I was a kid, I was in a theater and I would channel spirits. I would channel energies. I would, my goal was that I would step aside and that whether it be a fictional character or that I, I would be per portraying someone historically, that the energies that inspired those people that existed, that they would come into my body, that they would inhabit me. And when I, when I was performing, um, people would say, you know, one of the main things I did was Freddie Mercury. I did that, you know, for many oh, years all wow. over Europe, the United States. And I met a lot of Freddie Mercury's friends and family and they would say, I don't know how you can do this. Nobody would know that unless you knew that's him. That's so cool. That, and I it was, I would go, well, I just, I don't know. I do I guess I'm just channeling the, the spirits. And that's, that's, that's what initially drew me to the theater and the film um, but as I as I've matured, as I've uh, as I've come into my own, it's fun. I I still enjoy the aspect of it. But my main thing now is that I'm focused more on the occult. I'm focused on magic. I'm focused on 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 psychic. On, on I'm, I'm there's a lot of things. You're that back I'm, on I'm your spiritual on. journey more. You're, it's yes. attracting you. <laughs> well, because in 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 early days in the theater, I was such a weird kid. I was you know. Uh, skinny and pale and slightly feminine and odd and weird and you know <laughs> spirited and and haunted and all of these <laughs> things that would 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 make me a pariah uh so i i needed to go on the, into the theater so that i i could forget so that i could for an hour be somebody else so that for an hour i i i i didn't exist i had it was it was sort of a barrier that i i had um wow. And I, then, I, can, I feel that in common. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people who do theater, a lot of they they oftentimes don't even understand or do acting. They don't even understand that they are conjuring, that they are um, inviting the spirits, they are invoking beyond the veil. So for me, that was I didn't realize it, but good actors oftentimes don't. Exactly. Um, oftentimes we've we've heard of of a-list celebrities who say they go how did you how did you how did you know how to do this role how did you step into this role and many times they'll say oh i was possessed by or oh yeah, I, I, I i i just stepped out of my body it's another way of saying it is channeling it is it's witchcraft that's so cool i never thought of that i'm into that part of hollywood too my dad i don't need to talk about myself but my no, I love to. I, I mean, it's, it's your show, and I—it's a conversation. I love to have that. Thank you. Oh, my dad—he comes. Well, my family comes from that part of the like theater and music, and he. We will always talk about that, and like, oh, the good singers and the actors—they feel it. You could see it. You could feel the the energy, the emotions, and stuff. Well, and it's absolutely true. 
Um, some of the most haunted places I've ever been to are theaters. And it, it, it's because whether it, be a, whether it be a cinema or whether it be a stage theater, these actors are bringing in real emotions and they are projecting those real emotions out into that audience, into that space. And those real emotions will vibrate and reverberate off of those walls. And so that energy, it's real, they're, they're, they're bringing it up and they're putting it out into those, into those, those spaces. So it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is quite beautiful. I had a, a ghost story that if I may, I'll tell yeah, about it. So growing up, well, not growing up, I was an adult. I was a young adult then, but I, I, I started doing ballet when I was 21. I know late, <laughs> but I started doing ballet. And we always opened at this beautiful theater in Miami, Oklahoma. They, they call it Miami, but I, I could never bring myself to call it Miami. But at, the, <laughs> at this theater, it was, it was a Coleman Theater on historic Route 66 Highway. Cool. And it was just, it was so beautiful. It was built in the 20s, I think 1927. And it was several million dollars back then that, that it cost to... to build the building and it had Tiffany chandeliers and a beautiful place. It was abandoned in 1959. The last show was in 1959. By the 70s, it was going to be torn down. It was going to be raised because it had leaked and it was, it was just in a bad state. And then one man came in and bought it, started restoring it. And now it's, it's, it's back up and running and they have shows. It's a beautiful place. Well, I was doing, I think Cinderella, it may have been that show, but I was doing I was doing some ballet there, and I arrived early, like I always do, too early, in mm -hmm. fact. So I went up I would I went up to the top dressing room. They were a, a, they were all stacked to series around a spiral staircase, all about three floors up. And I went all the way to the top, and I sit there, and I'm putting on my makeup. The lights went out. Someone walked behind me, and I went, "Oh, hello." there's a presence here. That's really lovely. Okay. That's nice. And then I was so early that I, I stretched out and I took a nap. I went in, I did the show. And after my performance, the man from the historical society came in to congratulate me. And he said, great performance, great show. Well done. He said, it's so funny that you have this dressing room. I said, why? He said, well, Back in the 20s, there was, a, there was a star, a diva, and this was her dressing room. She didn't want anyone else to have a dressing room higher than her because that was her position. She knew that she was higher than everybody else. And so since she was up here, she died sometime in the, in the, in the 40s, but she was, her, her real time was the 20s. That was, where she was, that was where she was happiest, 20s and 30s. And then she died. And then in the last show in 1959, there was a young woman up here getting, getting her makeup on and getting dressed. And everyone down below heard a scream and a crash. And everyone ran up the stairs to meet her. She ran down the stairs in hysterics saying, there's someone in the room, there's someone in the room. The lights went out and wow. someone walked behind me and I dropped all of my makeup and my perfumes and I broke all of the bottles and I, I, I there's somebody up there, please go, go check it out. They went back up, the lights were on, everything that she had dropped was up on the, it was, it, it was as if it was never disturbed. Nothing was broken, wow. it, was, it was all right there. He says, so it's really funny that you have this, this room. And I said, well, she knows that I'm a diva too. So it's, and I, I told him about what I had experienced. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. That's really cool. That's why I love the, those yeah. places. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, it's really, well, this one in particular is one of my favorites. It's, it's so magical um, and, and severely haunted. I mean, there was, for one thing, it was right on Route 66 and there were, mob bosses that had come through bonnie and clyde had come through in the 30s oh. but they had big big stars too they and the, the stage was reinforced so that they could have an elephant walk on stage i oh. mean really it was quite a magical thing uh i think one of the the funniest things that happened to me was mr coleman the original owner of the building he had an office in between the ground floor and the mezzanine and as i was walking up I got this waft of old aftershave. 
Ooh. like 30s aftershave. And it was one that, that I, I was very familiar with. I don't know the name, but I, I, I had smelled it. And I, I stopped. I was with a group. I said, wait, do you smell that? And they, people started smelling that aftershave and the cigar. And I went, he just walked, Mr. Coleman just walked by us. He's, he's here. So that was, that was a fun one. Then there was, a, there was a, a cleaning crew, a woman who fell from the mezzanine before opening night. She fell, uh, she was cleaning on, on, a, on a Sunday, I think, Saturday or Sunday. Opening night was the following Monday. She was discovered that Monday, folded in half, she'd fallen off the balcony. So they, they don't know if she was pushed. They don't know what had happened. But that, that was always, you know, we would see lights that would come out of the, out of the projection room and walk down the, down, down the mezzanine. Wow. So, yeah, lots of, lots of energy, lots of spirits in the theater. That's really cool. That's very interesting. I might have to give back on you one day for that. <laughs> that was really cool. You have a lot of stories. Well, I, I've lived, you know, I'm, I, I have, I, I have lived a thousand lifetimes in this lifetime alone. I can see that <laughs> you're very like, um, not an old soul, but yeah, an old soul. I'm an old soul, but I, but you know, I, 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 I went to when I started my real spiritual journey. I was living in Vegas, and um, I went to Liberace Psychic, oh. and I said, "Oh, that's Liberace." She said, "Oh, yes." I was a psychic and she said he was so sweet and people would, people would, he would come to me and he would say, well, what if people find out about me? And she said, Lee, they will find out and they're going to love you. Yeah. They so, do, they? yeah. So, and I said, oh, that's very sweet. But I sit down and she says to me, you are an old soul. Yeah. And I went, funny. okay. <laughs> and she says, no, you're very old, and your last life was a, a, was in the court of Louis the Fifteenth. You were a beautiful, uh, a beautiful woman, and things were easy for you, and things were handed to you. And now you have to let it go because now it's it's no longer you have to you have to move on from that. And I said, but I like her. <laughs> she That's says, funny. well, you like the same music, and you like the same furniture and you like the same mm -hmm. colors but she, it's not the 18th century anymore and things are not so easy anymore and you need to let her go and I went okay and she says well this is actually your last life maybe one more but this is your last life and I said no I don't want that I want I, I don't want it to be the end and she says well you may not now but you will I promise <laughs> one day yeah. you're going to say I'm tired of the lessons and she says and, and it's okay because when people some people think that when you when you have reached the end of your spectrum that you come back as a guardian or you get to travel the universe it doesn't matter but the learning the lessons are all over the hardships are over and so I was now I, I, that I've matured I go oh yeah. That's what she meant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it too. <laughs> um, well, since we're talking about that, uh, what was your first paranormal experience? Well, you already kind of said that, I think. Or was well, I mean, I've had many paranormal experiences. Even, I mean, my first one, um, wow, I guess the first one is before I was in the, before I was born, I was in the womb. And my mother was bleeding internally. The doctors told her that she needed to have an abortion to save her life. My mother, my mother didn't know what to do. So she said, well, let me go and think about it. Let me, let me, let, I, I, I have to think about this because she wanted, she wanted a baby. She wanted me. Um, so she was home and she was resting on her sofa. She had to have a bowl of oranges next to her because even though she doesn't like oranges, but she had to have that bowl of oranges because it would, it would, it would craving. settle her stomach. Mm -hmm. What was that? Her craving. Yeah. It, it, she didn't eat them. She just had to smell mm -hmm. citrus. So she's lying there sick to her stomach and not feeling well. And in walks this radiant olive skin, dark haired woman wearing a flowing red gown and she says to my mother, his face, my mother says, knowing it was about me, what about his face? 
His face. What about his face? Is he ugly? Is he deformed? His face. What's wrong with his face? My mother exclaimed. The woman said, the glory of God shines all over it. Oh, and my mother goes, oh, closed <laughs> her eyes in relief. And then she thought, wait a minute, who's that woman in my house? She opened her eyes and there was no one there. Oh, wow. Well, that energy has been with me. I, I have encountered that energy myself. That's your, um, I'm sorry, that's your guardian or your spirit guard then, right? Yeah, well, yes, I, I, you know, some people call them spirit guides, some people call them guardians, some people call them deities, some people call them gods, I call them friends. I think, <laughs> yeah, <it's>, that's, <laughs> I think that's a little, a little easier, but that was, that was my very first experience, but I mean, since since then, I mean, and that was my I was I, my name. My full name is Richard Leo Lillard. And my my father was Richard William. So my my mother named me Richard Leo, but she called me Richie for a long time. In fact, you can still find remnants of Richie online because I didn't want to be called Richard. I don't want to be called Richard. But uh, I, I recently went, you know, I really do like Richard Leo as one as my first name so Richard Leo Lillard but it's uh, there's power in the name and my first name is Richard which is Middle English it means powerful ruler mm. Eliel in ancient Aramaic or Leo in, in, in colloquial Engl English uh, Leo is of God or chosen of God or derived from God or sent by God but specifically El La El the horned god of the Middle East, Lael. And then Lillard, the surname of Lillard, is a derivative of Lollard, which means heretic, witch, opposer of the faith, accuser of the brethren, mumbler, spellcaster. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I quite enjoy what my name means. I think it's very beautiful. It's very eloquent. Thank you. Um, I just remind me, I, I keep talking about, but it reminds me of my daughter. I named her light worker but it's there's a spanish for that like i didn't know it meant that until i was mixing up i wanted to put light in spanish it would be loose and i went to look up the meaning of ida and it means worker or labor oh i didn't realize it until we ended up writing it officially i'm like oh my god it's light worker <laughs> that's <laughs> so, so like, sweet really cool. i understand that when you say that Names are very important. Names are very meaningful. It took me a long time to be able to accept Richard Lael Lillard um, because I thought that was, Richard Lael was too much to have people to say. And I didn't want to be called Richard. I never wanted to be called Richard. In my mind back then, there were, there were two kinds of Richard. My father was, a, was kind of an anomaly, but there were the, the very stern, my name is Richard, you know, very sort of like... Mm -hmm. And then there were there were there was the opposite end of the spectrum of the really Nelly flamboyant. Oh my God, my boyfriend Richard! <laughs> you and I went. I don't that. like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I, I even for a while when I I was a hairdresser for a while, uh, long I've done a lot of things. Oh, I get uh, you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I decided my my mentor said to me, "Well, you can't. I, I think you should go by Richard." I said, I don't like the name Richard. He said, well, then if you're not going, you can't just go by Richie. I went, well, I don't know what else to go by. He said, well, then maybe come up with another name. So for a while, I went by Jonathan Zarin. It, I roll my eyes at it because now I go, oh, God, that's so pretentious. But I, I didn't change it legally. It was just, it was just a, a pseudonym. Is that the word I'm looking for? But it was just, it was just another name I used. Okay. I like that. I didn't know that. Jonathan, what was it? Jonathan. Jonathan Zarin. My my brother's it, name is John, but he's named. See, my family grew up very, not Christian Christian, but spiritual. So they, we would always mm -hmm. have like a Bible name. So I'm Maria de Lourdes. My brother's Juan Graviel. So it would be John Garbio from the Angels. Mm -hmm. And my dad, he's got, the, it's, everybody has Bible names. <laughs> well, you know, my family, we were, we, I, I grew up Pentecostal. 
so my family didn't, we didn't, we didn't really do all biblical names. My sister's name is Diana after the goddess Diana, the, the mighty huntress. Uh, and then my little brother is Daniel, as in Daniel and the lion's den. So he did have a, a biblical name. And then I was Richard Lale. And Lale actually is only mentioned, there is, there, there's only one time it's ever mentioned within biblical context. And I, I don't even remember now where, but it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's a throwaway passage. It's sort of the son of Lael or whatever it was. I'm curious. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> um, yeah, my parents, my dad was more free thinking, even though my, my grandpa was a pastor. And then grandma was the one that's a little bit more. And I still don't know too much about <laughs> mm. She was the one that would smoke a cigar. Let's just say that. <laughs> I understand. I understand completely. Um, the third question. Oh no, I'm sorry. the The second question was, when was the first time you realized, oh shit, I'm psychic? <laughs> well, you know, I didn't really have that moment. Well, I, okay. So I had, I had done. I I had always known things. I always thought people knew things. Um, really, sort of what what sort of drove it home for me was about. 12 years ago, I still have the cards, by the way, but 12 years ago, a friend of mine gave me a, a set of tarot cards. And he says, I want you to have them. I said, oh, thanks. And he says, no, on one condition, that you will read my cards right now. I said, I, but I don't, I, don't know, I, don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, don't, I've, I don't know how to work them. I don't know what they mean. He says, I don't care. I want you to read my, my cards for me. And I went, uh, okay. So I laid them down and I said, this is what I see. And he goes, oh, wow, wow, that, wow, that was really good. That, that was really, you're really good. That was really spot on. That's so, cool. yeah, so that was like 12 years ago. And then I just started doing it for parties and for events. And, you know, it was just one of those things. I just, it was just something that I did. I, I just, this is what I did. That's really cool. Cause my, See, that's why I like you guys, because it just reminds me a little bit. Every I talk to Patty, to you, and the classes I've been getting, it just reminds me of my old self. <laughs> Growing up, I used to be very curious, but my dad was really sweet about it. He's like, well, as long as you don't do anything too crazy. And my mom was the same way. Only when we left to Puerto Rico was it just, that's another story. That it got really really strangely strict and Pentecostal and mm -hmm. skirts and don't do this, don't do that, don't believe in that. Long sleeves, long hair, yeah. no television, no no yep. movies, no no music other than gospel music. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just starting my spiritual journey, I think was at 10 or 12. And then at 16 is when we left. And I was trying to explain to my grandma and them, like, this is, no, this is my personal spiritual journey. Like, I think of it differently than everybody. I'm like, no, this is the way, see, in the Bible, they say that, 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 like, oh, God. <laughs> so I, I mean, you know, if, if, here's the thing, if the Bible gives people hope and it gives them joy and it gives, that's fine if it's a personal choice. Where I sort of fall into the aggravation is when, religious people and it's not just christians but when religious yeah. people say this is the only way that it can be this is the only way that it is this is the only way that you can believe because i know i'm right so that if, if i'm right then if you believe differently then you must be wrong then you must go and <laughs> it, it, it even happens a lot of times i'm a satanist but i'm not i'm not with the church the, the church yeah. of satan and i'm not with the satanic temple i am sort of luciferian i take from buddhism and hinduism mm -hmm. and christianity and you know world religions uh, judaism i mix them all together i mix things and it's things that work for me i don't you know i'm, I'm not in the conversion business i'm not a mormon mm -hmm. but i have other other satanists who say no that's not what satanists believe <laughs> and i go well maybe not you but Satanism is really, it's supposed to be very individual. It's supposed to be. Yeah. So, you know, believe whatever, whatever you want, as long as you're not forcing it onto the people. That's, that's the key point. <laughs> my poor, that's why my dad was 
very um, patient with me because he was forced into it. He would tell me funny stories of grandpa just pull him by the ear. You know, oh, it's God. Sunday. We're going. I need to. <laughs> and, and then that stuck with me. And I would like um, question myself, like, if this is the only way, why is it has to be forced? If, if if it's naturally the way it it wouldn't have to be forced exactly well and that's that is a major issue that i have with abrahamic faith in 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 general but specifically islam and christianity is that by by this point in in history most most jewish people are jewish by birth, Jewish by ancestry. And it sort of becomes a social club. And I think it's beautiful. There is some, the cabal is very uh, religious and it's magical, but ultimately it's just about energy and they don't, they're not in the conversion business. Uh, but Christianity and, and Islam are much newer than Judaism. So they, they're still in that phase where they have to sort of force. Uh, yeah. Christianity is, it has mellowed I, a little than, you know, there's not, there's not the Salem witch trials and there's not the, the there's not the inquisitions and there's not, mm. th there's not all of that. However, it still is, it, it's still there. But then we have people who have, of Muslim faith who oftentimes will, you see them beheading teachers in, in Paris mm. because mm. They, they've shown a cartoon of the, the prophet Muhammad. Mm. Yeah, it's, I find that so sad. It, it's, it's incredibly sad. But the problem is that with Abrahamic faith, especially Abrahamic faith, is that it has always been by force. Uh, whether it be the Romans going into the, the Celtic regions and chopping down trees and beheading, or whether it be um, the ancient Jews going in and, and, and slicing open pregnant women, mm -hmm. or, or whether it be Muslims now beheading, or whether it be even, even Christians now voting politically to, mm -hmm. to say, we're right and you're wrong and we get special privilege because we believe like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's, it, it, it's often by force. Um, when, if we look at American history alone, when, when, when the, the Protestants came here and they, they, were, they were these good Christian people who were fleeing persecution, they were the ones who poisoned and infected with yep. with diseases on um, intentionally infected with diseases mm -hmm. the native americans yep. they would they they would take their land and they would say you have to speak in our language and you have to speak you have to pay homage to our deity this is the only way or else we will kill you that's part of why i don't know half my history <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um i am fourth generation uh, my great 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 grandma was Taino, Indian, and then my great great grandpa was the soldier, the Spanish soldier that saved her. Supposedly, they got married. Wow! <laughs> yeah. So every time you say that, like it just it doesn't click with me because if it's the only way, that wouldn't have happened, and it just it doesn't click with me that much. <laughs> um, so the third third question i remember sure. i remember you were talking about buddhism how did you come across the side of spirit spirituality and how can we as a society like go of being so closed-minded when it comes to other religions idealism and spirituality well you know i i have utmost respect for buddhism it is the closest thing to what i believe than any other major world religion um because there are atheistic Buddhists and there are theistic Buddhists, where some of them will say, this was a man who achieved godhood. Mm -hmm. Others will say, this was a man who developed meditation and, and broke away from, from Hinduism and, and it was about empowering. But one thing that they do agree on is that the meditation, will, it, it helps to soothe them and it, it helps to direct them and, it, it, and to be kind to one another, to be good to one another, to be good to, to animals, to, to have everything in harmony and in balance. So I got into it, you know, as I, as I said, I studied world religions, but I, I, when I was sort of not knowing where I was going, because I'd studied a little Hinduism, I'd studied a little, a little bit of here and there. When I moved to San Francisco, 
I started I started looking at Buddhism and looking at the Bhagavad Gita, even though you know it's a holy book that has some good points and some some not so good points. As a story, I like it. the The symbolism behind it, I like it. Um, so I I was doing yoga, and that that helped me to to open my my mind to meditation, to cutting off certain aspects of pain, mm-hmm. to um, to overcoming pain. So, as far as advice goes, meditation is essential. Yoga, if you can. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I try to get a little bit every day, at least. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a mommy, so it's not that easy, but I try. And the fourth question, what advice can you give to kids that are dealing with these gifts, abilities, and might be lost or confused as to what is happening to them and as to what to do with these abilities or gifts in their everyday lives? Well, um, a major thing is that it's easy to feel like that you are alone and it's easy to feel like people will tell you you're crazy. So sometimes, sometimes you have to be, I wish that everyone could be open. I wish that everyone could understand. I wish that everyone could be who they are. I wish that, but they can't. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to sort of make alt, make it, make an altar that is, um, acceptable. So if, if if you gather stones, just say, oh, it's because I like rocks. <laughs> or, or if you are gathering twigs, oh, it's just because I think it's pretty. Um, that's sort of it's sort of under the radar. Unfortunately, not every household has opened to witchcraft and opened to magic and open, and they'll tell you, oh, that's crazy. Don't think that way. Oh, that don't say that. People will will look at you funny. So sometimes you have to be a little bit more silent. And I, I hate that. I wish it could yeah. be the other way. I wish that people could be more open. Um, the major thing is believe in yourself. Don't doubt who you are. Don't doubt your abilities. Even if you have to go under the radar. Uh, there are things, however, that we as, we as we learn and we grow, there are things that we cannot say to people that even though we would like to, or even though it's on our mind, we can't always say it. And, and the case in point, long story short, I was in Greece and I'm, I was out. I had, a, I had a glass of wine. I was feeling, feeling good. And I met, I met this group of people and I called her a name that I had heard her tell me. She said, why did you say that? And I said, isn't that your name? She said, well, that's my middle name. Why did you say that? And I said, I heard it. Didn't, didn't you tell me? No, I didn't tell you. Oh so God. she asked me what else I knew. And I basically told her that she was suicidal. Well, she broke down in tears and she was crying. And now, now I would, I would approach that differently. I would say to her, let's go talk privately because there are things that I know. And then I would say, your life is worth living. You are valuable. There is a struggle, but you are, there are good things for you. That's what I would, that's, that's my advice. That's really good. Cause I, and I don't want to talk to myself, but I want to add, cause I've been through that too. Um, I've been in situations like just normal work. I try to live life normally and it's not working out. So <laughs> um, I've had cases where I'm like just a normal day at work and something pops up and I'm telling the person I'm thinking in my head, should I say it or should I not? But there's like this urge, like just say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. And it turns out to be something that was true. And I'm like, how did I know that? That's so weird, but sometimes I like I feel like the urge to say it, but I, I'm trying to learn to keep it to myself if I don't have to. Well, and and it comes down to if someone asks, that's often that's an indication. If they do not ask, that's a tricky situation because mm-hmm. then you go, okay, well, um, is it going to benefit their lives? Is it going to make is it going to make them better? That is a tricky one. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and then the fifth question: Do you believe some religions can be used for brainwashing? And if so, what are some ways to protect ourselves from this mindset? Well, absolutely. Um, religion is a tool of of brainwashing, and it, it oftentimes is a way of 
of getting you to strip down your defenses. So the way that you combat it is by studying and by learning, by, by understanding what other people believe. And then you're able to go, okay, I don't believe any of it. And then you create your own. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that's kind of what I did is just, I, I went, I don't believe this and I don't believe this and I don't believe this and I don't believe that. But, you know, I kind of like certain things. So I, I make them fit my own world. I can see that too. <laughs> Um, and then where would you like to be in your career in five years? You know, in five years, well, that is actually something I really, I I am focusing on, but it's not quite the time yet. Um, as I'm working with Nick at Haunted Diary, things are, you know, helping to to align in that direction Mm -hmm. as far as teaching and bringing, um, bringing knowledge to people and, bringing people together so that they can forget the outside world, forget about politics, forget about religion and just come and laugh and learn and grow and play and have fun. I like that. That's really cool. Um, We need that right now. (laughs) Um, The second question in from the other paragraph that I have here, where do you see humanity heading in the years to come? Well, right now is, right now is, we are at a precipice. We are, you know, since the 60s, people have been saying we're we're coming into the age of Aquarius, an age of enlightenment, the age of peace, (laughs) but no one actually really knows when those ages end or when they begin, no one actually knows. So it's, it's not, it's not exact. So we are coming upon a new age. And the problem with coming upon a new age is, yes, it will. It will happen. There will be peace. There will be enlightenment. However, when when something new is coming, the old one fights to keep its place. Mm -hmm. That's the upheaval that we're experiencing. That is the anxiety. And it may not even be whatever in this age of Aquarius that is coming. People may not we may not be the ones on this planet who have the deciding factors anymore. It may be some other evolved species, or it may be another mass, mass um, destruction. Just uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Extinction. Um, it may be, it may not be, but we are coming upon an age when, when enlightenment and peace will guide the planet. Wow. That, that just clicked. That makes a lot of sense why the protests and everything that that's really cool that you put that together thank you so oh, let me see oh it's been 30 minutes <laughs> i don't want to take up too much of your time um it's been a pleasure talking to you and picking your brain uh, i hope this repeats uh this was richard leo everybody and you could find them on his webs he has a website on the gentleman psychic.com you can find me under richard leo lillard you can find me under the gentleman psychic twitter instagram facebook youtube under patreon if you if you google the gentleman the gentleman's house oh. i think is how it comes up the gentleman's house and patreon uh twitter all of it all <laughs> richard leo lillard the gentleman psychic is how you can find yeah, and it was a pleasure with you. And I, I, this was really nice to talk to you. I, I was nervous, and it just completely left <laughs> as we continue the conversation. So I, I am so glad. This was an thank honor. you for having me. No, thank you. Um, My pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. I hope it repeats. And if you would like to subscribe and like and share to keep getting more of the content that you're seeing, have a good one. Blessings and namaste.